Hey there, welcome to another episode of an ongoing series where we basically take the camera anywhere we want to try to find secrets and new discoveries to some of our favorite games. We are finally back to Valve games and we're looking at Left 4 Dead today. Something that I know if you guys are interested in, we will definitely go back to Left 4 Dead 2 because I thought I'd have to combine the two games together to make one video, but there was enough stuff to find here in Left 4 Dead 1 that we might as well save the second game for another time. With that said, let me show you what I did find in the first game. Alright, so first I want to talk about something that's just hidden in plain sight. Here in this kitchen, you have a box of cereal, and you can actually make out the image. It's a deranged looking cow holding a spoon, and the name of the cereal is called Choco Bites. Also in the bottom right hand corner, it says free spoon. But on the back of the box, there's something that's really special. It's a Team Fortress 2 Easter egg. One of the easiest images to make out is heavy over here, over to the right. And all across, it says free inside one six inch figure. Then it shows a picture of the Team Fortress 2 crowd, and it says Team Fortress 2. Then in the blue circle, it says fully posable, but the rest of it, I couldn't possibly make out. At the very bottom, though, it says collect all 10, which I gotta say was not something I was expecting to see. That's not the only Team Fortress 2 reference either. There are various parody cleaning products, like this one says Chlorine. And over here is a combination parody of the Scotch Bright brand as well as the Comet Cleaning Powder. But over in Left 4 Dead, it's called Scout. Then over in this living room, there's a newspaper, and although it's very, very blurry, you can see that one of the people that's printed on the newspaper is Dr. Breen from Half-Life 2. And next up, I want to talk about the weird things that we can see with character models, but first, let's talk about today's sponsor, Wanted Dead. Wanted Dead is a overlooked 2023 gem that features hybrid slasher and shooter gameplay from the creators of Ninja Gaiden. In this game, you follow the life of the zombie unit, a police squad from Hong Kong, on a mission to uncover corporate conspiracy. Its cyberpunk setting and hack and slash gameplay is only further complemented by its absurdity. The game features all sorts of amazing mini games like a ramen eating contest, a karaoke mini game, and so, so much more. Honestly, it's you come for the gameplay and you stay for the absurdity. I I love it. The game has seen substantial improvements since its original release. Developers actually just put out a game patch that has greatly improved the performance of the game. And even before that, journalists were writing about how it was one of the most overlooked games of 2023. So if you're up for some wacky characters combined with hack and slash and shooter gameplay, Wanted Dead is going to be the game for you. If you're interested, check out the links in the video description as well as the pinned comment below. All right, well anyways, thank you so much Wanted Dead and back to the show. Next up, we have the pilot here. We're doing a nice good close up and you can see that he's looking pretty rough. Not only is the textures all very low quality, but his face and his clothing and everything looks fatigued and infected. But what's really cool is that if you clip the camera through his sunglasses, you can actually see that he has eyes. And since the helicopter is constantly moving, and I had no way to freeze the gameplay, I downloaded the model from the modelsresource.com and I removed his glasses that way so that you guys can get a nice good look at the pilot's fully modeled eyes. Next up is LOD models, and if you don't know what that is, quick explanation. Typically when models are much, much further away, developers are able to render more on screen thanks to having models that are far off in the distance that have less polygons. Think about the difference between a PlayStation 5 game and a Nintendo 64 game, and the LOD models tend to look more like the N64 games. <laughs> With that said, all the main survivors have their own LOD models, and I'm here to show them off to you. It's kind of fascinating. We got Lewis here, and his mouth sort of smiles a bit more and his eyes look down. His, believe it or not, is probably one of the best looking LOD models out of the bunch. Get ready, because Zoe here just straight up looks possessed. She loses her eyes completely and honestly would probably fit right in with the zombie horde. Then we got Francis here and oh boy, this is where things start to get good. His eyes turn into lizard eyes and he loses his goatee. Something I was very surprised by. And of course there's Bill and he has the lizard eyes as well. Probably has it more profoundly than Francis. But the survivors aren't the only ones that get LOD models. The witch, for example, straight up loses her hair. What's really cool though is that the character has a texture on the back that represents the hair. And there's actually multiple stages of LOD. Five in total for some characters like the witch. So I also wanted to show you an LOD model that's in between those two where she does get to keep her hair, but it's much, much lower detailed. Speaking of the witch, I wanted to show you what her model looks like in game when you take the camera past the glowing red eyes. Yeah, the glowing redness is actually on a layer that's kind of sitting in front of the witch. And then we got the smoker and his is pretty great actually. The key difference that you'll see here is that the pussiness on his mutated part of his face loses the bubbles and just sort of conforms into a flat surface, but the texture quality is still pretty good. 
and obviously from a far away distance it would be really hard to notice this change. The tank though is not as fortunate. Reducing him to the lowest LOD setting basically caves his head in and stretches his eyes out. It's really freaking funny. And as for the zombies themselves, I couldn't seem to affect the LOD in the character viewer. But I did want to show you a couple things. One is that their eyes can look different from model to model, which is really fascinating. They don't have a homogenized look amongst them. So if you take the time to look at each of their faces, you can see that some of them have very different zombie eyes from one another. Some of them are completely bloodshot, others are completely white, and some are red with red pupils. It's really wild. And like I said, even though they do have LOD models I've definitely seen in the game itself, sadly I couldn't get close to them, but I'm assuming they share the same LOD models as these environment zombies, but they also seem to have these hilarious low poly faces. Just taking the camera up to a few just so they can get a sample of what I'm talking about here. And then another thing I want to show you with models is one of the guns. On the side of the pistol, it has legible words on it. This one says Finleyville Armory. And then on the opposite side of that, it says Model 1911AI Caliber 45. And you can see that the bullet clip is in fact housed inside the gun. And now we'll do a zoom out of the first map of the first game, letting you see the entire area in one shot. And then I want to talk about this boat scene here. Obviously your characters get onto the boat and then there's this cutscene that triggers where you don't see your survivors anywhere. And the most likely answer for where they actually are is probably inside of this white cube that's just outside the map. Funny thing is, is that it would be in plain sight if it weren't for the sky box. And no, I'm not talking about the box in the sky at the moment, I'm talking about a video game's sky box or sky dome. Something that I would also love to explain to you guys. See, Left 4 Dead runs in the Source engine, and Source does something really, really weird with sky domes. I guess you wouldn't necessarily call this a sky dome, but something that's pretty unique to Valve games is that underneath any given map is a miniature model, essentially, of what ends up getting projected around the entire map. It's neat because if you go at a certain distance in the regular map, you'll hit a black void and the entire background elements will just disappear. But that's only because the whole thing is just being projected around you. And in order to go up close and personal with these background models, you have to go right to the source, which like I said, usually ends up being underneath the map. And speaking of Source Engine, here's a default texture that a lot of people who use Hammer will immediately identify. Though, in the games themselves, it's kind of rare to find this. See, for the default textures, you get this grid here, and it relays some information for you. It says wall 128 by 128, and the 128 by 128 is the measuring units on each square. And here's something that's really interesting. Enemies spawn well outside of a player's view at any given time. And everything is sort of attached to different loading squares throughout the entire map. So if an enemy is loaded well outside the distance and it wasn't theoretically supposed to be seen by the player yet, what you get is enemy models saved to a specific position ready to animate in generally specific spots. But until they start moving, they're all loaded in as A-pose characters. Lots of people who watch this channel know all about T-poses and A-poses are just a variant of that. By the way, I got one of these helicopters that were in the background finally on camera. I and mean, even though this one is low poly, I'm very surprised to see that for a background element, there's a texture here that you would definitely not be able to see from the distance that the game wants you to see it from. It's on the side of the helicopter and it just says the number 23. I know that's not much, but still, it's a detail that you wouldn't be able to see. And on top of that, taking the camera this close up can show you what the detail of the helicopter is, which is another low poly model. Here's another cool little detail. When you're going through the elevator during this chapter, the elevator shaft is fully modeled, making for an enormously long elevator shaft. And and I say this because in most video games, the elevator shaft is merely an illusion or there's some sort of trick involved to make the elevator shaft shorter than it actually feels. But no, Valve made a legitimately long elevator shaft. Again, I love looking at Valve games just for the fact that they do things very differently over there. And then one of the later chapters where you board the plane, now there's a couple of now there's a couple of unusual things like this propeller here that's underneath the ground, but that's not the most interesting thing. <laughs> no, instead I would say this triangle is worth your time. Why why is a random triangle out of bounds worth your time? Well, this triangle was never meant to have a texture, but it does house the texture sheet for one of the airplanes. For example, this right here is the wing, and I believe this over here would be the cockpit windows. And then I wanted to take a look at some billboards and stuff like that. Like this one right here is really hilarious. It says, destroy your hunger, burger tank. And it looks like White Castle burgers being shot out of a tank. 
it's something that you would more than likely be able to see at different chapters of the game, but with the frenetic nature of Left 4 Dead, it's usually these details that kind of get left behind by players that are trying to frantically win the game. But feel free to let me know if you ever noticed that before. And then we got this Molotov cocktail over here. One of the things I was really surprised by is that the rag is fully modeled all the way down into the bottle. Clipping into the bottle can show you where it starts and ends, but on top of that, there seems to be like an interior model inside of the bottle. And I believe its purpose was to hide the rag if the player looked inside of the neck of the bottle. But I don't know, I'm really confused behind the purpose of what this actually was used for. Maybe it's supposed to be liquid actually, now that I think about it? If you think I'm wrong about that, feel free to let me know. And that's all I got for Left for Dead. If you want to help support the show with future episodes, you can become a YouTube member or a patron. I'll have links to both of those options in the video description if you're interested. Or if you're interested in seeing more out of bounds content from other Valve games, I actually have a second channel that I just opened up. It's all about making compilations of certain categories of Boundary Break episodes. And the one I just posted was Valve games. So if you want a long form video to either fall asleep to or have on your second monitor while you're working or have on your TV while you're watching the kids, this is definitely the video for you. I highly recommend it. But with that said, thank you all so much for watching and I'll talk to you again soon. Take care.